A lot of things can factor into what comes down to a casting decision for a film. Sometimes a casting director can already have someone in mind, but then the audition of another actor completely changes their mind. Today we'll be breaking down all the actors in iconic roles that came really close to not getting that part. Welcome to Inform Overload, I'm your host and bacon overlord Johnny Rogers and you're watching the number one tea spilling entertainment news show on the internet. First and foremost, before we kick this video off, let us know down below who your favorite actor is and tell us why. Also, if you don't want to miss another daily video from us, make sure you tap that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Plus, if you stay all the way until the end of this video, I'm going to be reading out some of your comments as well. Now, with any further delay, let's get right into today's list of the top 10 actors who almost didn't get the part. In at number 10, Leonardo DiCaprio. The amount of films that Leonardo DiCaprio has under his belt are insane. If you were asked to name which one was his most iconic, you'd be hard pressed. I mean, you'd have to take some time to just remember everything that he's been in. I mean, you've got The Great Gatsby, Inception, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, and, and so many more. Although the Titanic is still a film that many attribute to being the role that lifted Leo into global fame. That being said, he actually almost didn't end up getting the role because another actor had already wowed them enough to book it. Matthew McConaughey said during an interview that he auditioned for the character of Jack and was pretty sure that he had nailed it. So sure that he called his agent and told him that he nailed it. Unfortunately for Matthew, Leo's audition really left a big impression on director James Cameron. James said that when Leo came in for the meeting, he looked around the room and noticed that every woman in the building found a way into that meeting. He said when he noticed that the accountant was there and the female security guard, he thought, yeah, I better cast this guy. In at number nine, Daniel Craig. For a long time, the typical James Bond character was usually a spy with short black hair, but when the series retired that look and went with Daniel Craig, many hardcore fans of the series were shocked by a Bond with blonde hair. That being said, Daniel Craig wasn't always the first pick for the film Casino Royale. During an interview with Variety, Australian actor Hugh Jackman opened up about almost getting the opportunity to play James Bond. This was right after the success he had with X-Men, but when he was told that he didn't get a say in how the story of James Bond went, he ultimately turned it down. He felt that the script for Bond had been rather unbelievable and crazy, so Jackman just wanted to make them more gritty and real. Although in hindsight, this was probably the best thing to happen for both of their careers. Daniel Craig became a staple in that series, and Hugh Jackman went on to do nine more X-Men films over the course of seven years. In an break, Jennifer Aniston. With the show Friends being around for so long, it's hard to picture anyone else playing those roles. Believe it or not, though, the producers for NBC actually had a very different dream cast in mind. Initially, they had Courtney Cox in mind to play Rachel Green, but she identified more with the neat freak of Monica Geller. At the same time that Jennifer Aniston auditioned for the role, Saved by the Bell's Tiffany Thiessen was also chasing the part. She just happened to be a little too young for the required chemistry needed with the cast. Lucky for NBC, Jen decided to turn down an opportunity to work on Saturday Night Live and instead take on what would be one of her most memorable characters of all time. In at number seven, Chris Hemsworth. Much like the cast of Friends and all of these other film projects, it would be crazy trying to picture someone else playing Thor. Marvel Cinematic Universe was on the right track when they were first casting for this role, but they were just kind of looking at the wrong Hemsworth. Apparently his little brother Liam was actually in the running for the role and Chris nearly lost it due to a bad audition tape. Both brothers had sent in a tape and Chris sat back and watched as his little brother received callback after callback before they finally asked Chris to come in to be seen by casting in person. During an interview with W Magazine, he said, I came in kind of with a little, I guess, motivation and maybe frustration that my little brother had gotten further than me. It's a little family sibling rivalry sort of kicked up at me. Hey, whatever works. In at number six, Rain Wilson. If you were to pull television fans and ask what their top three favorite shows are, The Office will most likely pop up on that list. With the massive success of the British original starring Ricky Gervais, the show explored the daily operations of the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company, along with its quirky employees, of course. Perhaps one of the quirkiest of those employees was the character of Dwight Schrute. Before Rain Wilson's audition sealed the deal though, many other A-list actors were all vying for the spot. Adam Scott from Parks and Recreation auditioned as well as Seth Rogen and John Cho. However, the show was actually looking to cast this series in a much different way than most. Typically a show will try to lock down a big Hollywood name to bring some attention their way. However, with The Office, the fan base had already been established by the British version. So when it came time to cast the American side, the casting directors wanted to go with actors that people didn't really know at all. That way it felt more like a documentary. And this certainly helped Rain Wilson stand out. In at number five, Tom Cruise. American director, producer, screenwriter Cameron Crowe had a different Tom in mind when he was writing the script for his first major film, Jerry Maguire. The role of the cocky sports agent who decides to open up his own boutique agency was initially intended for Tom Hanks. Cameron admitted this in 1997 when he told news outlets that the role was originally written for Tom. Although Crowe took so long to finish the script that Hanks was no longer a 35 year old man. By the time that he got it, he was almost 40 and had two Academy Awards and wanted to direct at this point. Fortunately, Tom Cruise was young enough for the part and 
didn't have the enthusiasm to bring Jerry Maguire to life. That being said, even before Tom Cruise came along, they were also considering Woody Harrelson. However, when they approached him, Woody just didn't think that anyone would want to watch a movie about a sports agent, so he just turned it down. When the film came out in 1996, it was a box office and critical success. The film earned five Oscar nominations, including a Best Actor in a Leading Role nod for Tom Cruise. In at number four, Taron Egerton. Way back in 2001, Justin Timberlake donned an Elton John costume to be the centerpiece of the music video called This Train Don't Stop There Anymore. He certainly proved that he could look the part, but Elton's husband, David Furnish, who produced Rocket Man, said that they never formally approached Justin because it just wasn't the right time. After missing out on getting JT to play the role, they also did look at Tom Hardy. However, Elton said that they brought Taron Egerton on board because Tom dropped out. Elton was so amazed by his performance in the film that he said when he watches it, he doesn't see an actor, he sees himself. Which is entirely the point for a movie based on his life, but I also agree that Taron absolutely did a wonderful job with that film. What amazed me even more is that Taron was actually singing those Elton John songs and in no way just limp syncing to a track. The pair even performed live together several times after the film and it was incredible to watch them build that friendship. I couldn't have pictured Elton John and Tom Hardy hanging out. I don't know why. In number three, Matthew Broderick. Even with this film being decades old now, actor Matthew Broderick will forever be synonymous with his role of Ferris Bueller. That being said, he came very close to almost not getting the role. Believe it or not, but before they ever considered him, they were actually looking at casting Johnny Depp. The soon-to-be 21 Jump Street star was John Hughes' first choice for the role, but he had to turn it down due to scheduling conflicts. Although Depp did admit years later during an Inside the Actors Studio interview that Broderick did a great job with the film. In at number two, Whoopi Goldberg. 1992 was a great year for many reasons, but mostly because it was the year that the musical gift that is Sister Act was released in theaters. I still remember watching this movie as a kid on VHS, obviously, I would have been one years old at the time, but uh, just being introduced to the comedic genius of Whoopi Goldberg. And in the comedy flick, Whoopi Goldberg plays a lounge singer turned nun who discovers that there is more to life than just living for herself. With a personality as big as her hair, Goldberg absolutely shines in this film, making Sister Act a box office success and the eighth highest grossing film that year. People love Sister Mary Clarence and the gang so much that the producers of the film decided to make a second one. Believe it or not, but the part of Sister Mary Clarence was actually originally written for Bette Midler. Although she declined the role because she was sure that her fans wouldn't want to see her in a wimple, which if you don't know is the cloth headdress that is worn by some nuns. To this day, Midler considers that decision to be one of the most tragic mistakes of her entire career. Although it definitely helped lift Whoopi Goldberg into big time notoriety. Last but certainly not least on our number one spot, Brian Cranston. You were probably first acquainted with Brian Cranston in the early 2000s Fox television series called Malcolm in the Middle as Malcolm's dad, Hal. But you definitely got to love and perhaps hate him as Walter White in AMC's Breaking Bad. Walter White, a terminally ill science teacher, enters the narcotics business in order to provide for his family. Throughout the five seasons of the show, Cranston won five Emmys for his role, establishing a cult following. Fans of the show even held a controversial real-life funeral for Walter White following his death on the series. Spoiler alert, but it's an old show. Ironically, the creators of Breaking Bad really couldn't picture Cranston taking the role when they started casting for Walter White. John Cusack and Matthew Broderick were all early contenders for the part, mainly because they all still had the image of Brian shaving his body and Malcolm in the middle. When the show's producers saw his name pop up in the discussion, they said, really? Isn't there anybody else? Fortunately, Cranston's audition for the part, along with some convincing from top-level executives, eventually swayed them. And thus, he became one of the greatest drug dealers in television history. With that, now let's check out some of your featured comments. True Dad says, Howdy, IO hosts and crew. I hope that you are all doing well and staying safe during all the crazy in the world right now. Please keep the amazing videos coming. Much mom energy. Love to you all. Mom energy. I love that. We're all doing our best, True Dad. Uh, you know, we got a safe film environment going on. I appreciate you checking in with us, though. Much love to you as well. Aegon Targaryen says, I can't believe people are blaming Kim. The hate for her is strong. It makes people irrational. She's just an easy target to point fingers and blame. That's really all it is. Like, it must be his wife. And she has a history of, you know bad relationships. Dynasty Wolf says he's making people with mental health issues look like demons. Hopefully Kanye West is making people just aware of how bad it can get if things aren't taken care of. But I saw recently he was hanging out with Justin Bieber, so maybe he'll be fine. Ale says, I love Johnny's bloopers. He always makes me laugh. <laughs> Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. They always make me cringe. So Gina Grable says, I just hope it's something from College Dropout. Come on, how could it not be? I mean, drop drop a comment down below which song from College Dropout is your favorite. I'll be looking for those ones for the next feature. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to our editing team for all of their hard work. If you enjoyed this video, then please show us some love here by tapping that like and subscribe button. Plus, don't forget to leave us a comment down below with your thoughts on today's list. And for more videos like this one, all you gotta do is tap that playlist when it pops up. From Inform Overload, my name is The Bacon Overlord, Johnny Rogers, and until next time, 
Stay classy.